Hi, welcome to another edition of Design Spark at Say Expert. Today we're going to be talking about condition monitoring, and our expert is from T Connectivity, and it's John Tooley. Hi, John. Would you like to say hello to Design Spark? Yeah. Hey, Greg. How are you doing? And hello, everybody out there. Great. It's good to have you on board, John. Um, so let's let's go right from the, 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 the basics then. Condition monitoring. Can you explain to me why essentially that's important? Why is it important to monitor industrial equipment? Yeah, so condition monitoring has been around a long time. I mean, actually from the beginning of machines, you had to have somebody go repair, maintain them. And in the old days, it would be typically a guy, uh, you know, it, I used to call it that guy when I started in manufacturing back, you know, a long time ago. And you have these people in your factory managers that just can hear a machine, hear what's going on and know what's going on, right? But the problem is, is it's not based on data. So condition monitoring started where people started putting sensors on there, starting putting you know, on machines to start really trying to understand what's happening to the machine so that they can you know, improve uptime so the machines don't shut down unexpectedly, or when they do have a problem, they know where to look on the problem. So that's really why it's important. And, and, and again, you know, what's happening today is that it's, it's starting to evolve over time so, you know, if you take the old, in the, in the days, it was a guy walking around, you know, it, it, then PLCs were invented and, you know, everything was connected via PLC and the very high dollar assets, you know, clearly, you know, were monitored. And now we're in the age of, you know, condition monitoring on pretty much all assets. And that's really the machine to machine or industry 4.0 or whatever topic you have there around that. But it's, it's critical to maintaining, improving production, et cetera. OK, so you talk there about industry uh, 4.0. So condition monitoring has basically become the default ingredient of industry 4.0. So together with connected devices, sensors, edge computing and cloud connectivity, what's the intrinsic value that condition monitoring brings? Is it cost saving, real time data, decreased maintenance or is it all of these? <laughs> That's a great question uh, because all the companies are actually working through trying to figure that out right now, and 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 what they're finding is it's a it's a combination of all of those. So you get, you know, COVID clearly drove the need to have, you know, remote data. You don't have as many people in your plants. You you all of a sudden you don't know what's happening with your assets. You don't have the guys walking around. So you really need that uh, that data coming in. So. You know, that was a very interesting and, and, and we're seeing that accelerate with the labor shortages that we're seeing, at least here in the US, uh, where, you know, you can't find the people and the experience. So you get that real time data. So it gives you confidence that you're going to meet your production leads. So that's number one. Number two, there's an environmental impact on it. So for the company's ESG goals, you know, around environmental, social and governance there. Um, it really does, you know, allow factories to run more efficiently. Little things like being able to change the oil only when it's needed instead of every day or month or week or whatever you're supposed to do to, you know, optimizing your crews. So when they, you know, if you only have 10 maintenance guys in a, in a factory, you want to make sure that those guys are going to, to equipment that is broken, not just checking stuff that's not. So you're able to deploy them correctly. That saves energy, resources, and all of that. So from an environmental standpoint, it's good. And then lastly, and this is what most companies actually deploy them on, is really around productivity and cost savings and operating expenses, right? Because you actually are able to improve your output of the factory. You know, there's all kinds of studies out there. You see ranges from 10% all the way up to 40% savings, depending on the install of what's happening and how sophisticated the company was already around the savings to being able to save on operating expenses. You're able to deploy your people, have less people to support it and, and still get the the, 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 the maintenance and, and the uptime that you need. So yeah, it was great. That was a great question because it kind of combined, it's all of those things together. Yeah, and obviously, in your explanation there, you can see how one interrelates to the to the other. So in terms of the uh, ESG, for example, in terms of the environmental um, impact, but also not needing to change things unnecessarily, you're reducing the cost and you're keeping the asset up and running for longer. Yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah, it's a good analogy. Thanks for that. Um, Maintenance programs obviously have moved significantly forward in the last couple of decades. Um, we know we, we've had preventive maintenance, predictive maintenance, but where does condition monitoring and the sensors behind this journey take us? What, what are the trends that you're seeing now with, within condition monitoring? What I see today is, is that to, today we're in the place of, uh, you know, that predictive maintenance. We're absolutely there today where you can put sensors on the equipment today and you can pretty well predict 
hey, there's something going wrong with the machine, right? And so, you know, and, and just to just for your audience, you know, there, if you look at it, you know, condition monitoring starts really with just monitoring the machines uh, and just having the data um, and knowing that something's about to fail or, or fails or, or, or failing. And really predictive maintenance is when you go to and say, hey, now I know exactly when that's going to fail. That's going to be two months from now. I need to plan a downtime. And then the nirvana and where this is going is really that whole prescriptive maintenance. And this is where your AI, your machine learnings come in, your big data type of platforms. Because what happens is, is the and, and there are some companies that are doing this today where they're actually out there and you can actually put deploy sensors on your equipment and it'll actually say, hey, not only is I'm losing a bearing and it's bearing number four is dying, but I've also got the replacement already on order. That's already been scheduled through my, uh, my my system. And I now have a scheduler that automatically with ServiceNow or somebody like that, that always automatically says, hey, I now am able to go and have the, the, the people go and fix that machine without any human intervention. So the machine basically says, hey, I'm, all, I'm broke. I've got bearing number three, have a guy come out and fix me. And that's really the, the where this is going in the future is that prescriptive being able to really kind of handle that whole chain and really reduce the amount of manual intervention in there uh, and optimize your whole maintenance process. So yeah, that that really is when we t talk about smart factory. That that's essentially what you're saying. The the machine is ordering its own replacement <laughs> yeah. part and creating the job yeah, of work and, for and, for the maintenance engineer. Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. And and people think, oh well, that's way out there, and it's not. There's actually p examples of that happening today. You know, all the major platforms, you know, all of the major scheduling platforms have hooks in and they're starting down this. You know, before it comes common, we're probably still four or five years away before it actually really takes off. Um, but you're starting to see the roots of that. And, and what enables that is sensors being placed and being able to put sensors in more locations at a low cost, right? And that's really critical there. So where, where does, um, John, where does wireless fit in in all of this? So wireless is the enabling technology, I think, overall, especially in factories, because if you're going to put if you put 10 sensors in a, in a plant, pretty easy to, to wire them up, put them on your really expensive machine. So, in, you know, if you buy a million dollar CNC machine or something, that machine is probably going to have sensors in it. It's going to be wired to the PLC and you'll get that data out. But what happens is, is, is in plants, there's hundreds of different machines and, you know, there's pumps, there's motors, there's conveyor systems, there's all of those type of things that any one of them, even though it's a $10,000 pump or a $1,000 pump out there, that if that fails, it still shuts down your, your factory. So trying to put, uh, you know, being able to, to put sensors out there without having to run wires, so it's a labor cost. You don't have to have people running wires everywhere. It's also safety. Um, I had one customer come and tell me that they deployed uh, a wireless solution first on, on some big pumps. And the first time the maintenance guys went out there, they, they accidentally cut the wires, you know, just because you're crawling over stuff and yeah, you know, yeah. these are big pumps. So, so wireless made that solution possible and the cost point dropped. So, you know, uh, and, and what wireless, what's happening with wireless is really with the low power wireless LAN standards, lower WAN, um, you know, you've got things like Zigbee, you got, uh, you know, NB-IoT, you have uh, Bluetooth, all of those type of protocols are really dropping the power consumption. That along with the fact that our sensors now are getting smaller and we're dropping the power consumption on those, making them digital out instead of analog, things like that. It's really a, that convergence is enabling wireless sensors to be deployed broadly and widely at a very reasonable cost that can show that payback and ROI. Yeah, so just listening to obviously the conversation, a lot of the stuff around data and analysis is, is of key importance to run a successful plant. And obviously for maintenance purposes and operational effectiveness. So I'm going to ask you, is there any advice um, if somebody is looking to start their journey on condition monitoring and they're looking for improvements, essentially what are the kind of pieces of uh, plant machinery that they need to start monitoring? Well, there, from an advice standpoint, the first thing is, is they really need to understand what they're trying to accomplish, right? uh and and what their goals are so i, I know that's that's kind of higher level it really is not on the assets but it's really looking and saying okay where are my problem points where do i need to start and what am i trying to get out of this so really understanding what what they're trying to do is the first thing and there's various ways you can get to that point 
from an asset standpoint, the most common assets we see are, or I mentioned them earlier, it's really on pumping systems, anything rotating, anything with a motor has bearings and can fail uh, and cause your factory shut down, any type of conveyor system out there, any type of place where you're going to need to monitor temperature for whatever reason. Um, you know, an example is in data centers is a good example. You have to really control temperature, humidity there. So because what they're trying, what you try to do is you optimize your AC and your cooling and mm -hmm. you want to run things, you know, as as efficient as possible in those type of environments. In an oil and gas situation, you'll be out there. You want to make sure that you're monitoring the pumps out there, uh, you know, and, and those type of things. So that's what you're trying to do from an asset. And, and the most common sensor we have is actually vibration. That one tells you a lot of data. That's probably number one in a pumping system. Clearly you add pressure and then temperature is everywhere. I mean, you know, you typically have that vibration, temperature, pump, pressure, temperature. So temperature is kind of one of those things that you you have in conjunction with everything. So does that yeah. make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, I, I remember my days on motor monitoring, vibration, temperature, et cetera, were, were the things that we used to uh, call out quite regularly. So. Where does the, the TE value proposition for condition monitoring fit within all of this, John? Yeah, so TE, we actually provide both the kind of traditional condition monitoring. Uh, <clears throat> so we have wired solutions that are that are still very popular out there uh, that can connect. But I think where we're going is we're actually driving, you know, into the wireless realm and enabling, you know, customers to deploy sensors very easily uh, out there. Now, one thing to note is, is that we work with partners for gateways and for cloud. You know, we are a company that that we provide sensors and hardware. That's a, that's our direction that we do. Yeah. Uh, and we do some really innovative things on our sensors. We even have some versions that are going to be coming out that have AI in them, you know, so have machine learning actually in the sensor. Um, because one one trend we're seeing is, is that as all this data and all these sensors get deployed, more and more of that analytics needs to be at the edge because you can't be sending all this billion bytes of data up to the cloud. It just gets too expensive and, and too, too time consuming. So you want as much processing as you can at the edge. And that, that occurs really in two places. It's at your gateway. And now you're seeing uh, the, if you, the, the tiny ML movement is really driving those machine learning algorithms down into the sensor. Um, so we're, we're definitely following that trend. Yeah, I, I don't suppose you can get any closer to the edge than that, can you, John? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we call it we call it analytics at the point of sensing, right? The closer you get to where that sensing data is happening, the more efficient you are, the better data you have, et cetera, and you aren't having to do any transcriptions or filtering or compression to 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 know what's going on in that data. So we see that trend moving and accelerating very rapidly to to really do as much analytics as possible on the sensor itself. That's great. So in terms of condition monitoring, what I'd like you to do is maybe just give us a few of the products that T Connectivity can highlight as and offer as, as solutions to customers, for example. Oh, OK, great. Yeah. So the, the one of the 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 by talking on vibration is our 8911 LoRaWAN uh, platform, right? Um, so the 8911 is a vib piezo vibration sensor up to 10 kilohertz, so it's very high bandwidth. Uh, it communicates via LoRaWAN, and what's really cool about it is, is we give spectrum data out on the sensor. Um, a lot of the solutions out there today will give velocity displacement and, and basically RMS, uh, but we actually give the customer the ability to get spectrum data out in a frequency domain because we run FFTs on the, on it, and then we do some peak detection as well. So that's available today. It's it's I think it's on your website there as well. Uh, and it's available and, and we've seen customers be able to use that and deploy it very, very quickly. So that's one example. Another one is in pressure. We have a Bluetooth uh, pressure sensor called the 5600. Um, and that family uh, goes from, I think, 50 PSI all the way up to 10K PSI, depending on which version, has multiple different ports on it. Bluetooth enabled, so you can very easily connect it. You can connect it to a gateway. You can connect it to your smartphone very easily uh, to be able to connect. Um, and um, you know it's it's a very popular sensor for uh, for, for those applications as well. Um, and then just as just to mention, we also have a very large portfolio of wired sensors. And I you know like example the M3200 pressure sensor, digital out, I squared C, SPI, depending on what. And also has analog too. If you're if you're an old analog guy and want to do that, <laughs> uh, so it gives you all kinds of options to be able to connect those. Uh, yeah you know, two pumps as well. And we have a whole portfolio of those as well as temperature sensors. So those are just some of the examples that we have today. John, this has been a really great conversation. Um, 
and I guess we could talk for hours on condition monitoring. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yes. Um, and I really like to thank you for for coming to Design Spark and talking to us today. And perhaps maybe in the future we can have you back on again, because I'm sure there are other subjects and even extending this subject that we would uh, happily cover with uh, with yourself. Yes. I would love to come back. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, and there will be some really cool things being announced here come late summer. So I'd love to come back and talk to you about it and your audience about that. Fantastic. Thanks for your time, John, and, and take care. Okay, thank you very much, Greg.